I will call to order. Oh, there we are. We're recording now. I'll call to order this District of Clearwater regular council meeting for Tuesday, July 13th at uh, 2 p.m. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, that we uh, are sorry, begin by acknowledging that we are fortunate to be gathering together on the unceded territory of the Simp Nation uh, who have been caretakers of this land since time immemorial. Are there any late items this council wishes to add to the agenda at this point? Seeing none, can I get a motion to adopt the agenda as presented? Thank you, Councillor Herring. Seconded by Councillor Frizzle. We'll go with that. All those in favor? Thank you. Uh, adoption of the minutes of the regular council meeting of June 15th. Any errors or omissions or comment? They just they just dealt with that um, before this meeting, so that will be changed for we can we can always put these minutes off till the next meeting. Yeah, <laughs> to to the minutes, I know. So, um, I, I think the amendments have been captured that needed to be captured. I'll just direct that to staff about um, uh, is that Councillor Taylor's corrections to. The minutes so we'll just uh call it uh, a recommendation to adopt the minutes um with changes with amended um for june 15 2021 be adopted so um taking into account that uh that small changes have been pointed out to staff we'll go with that so okay so are we good with that? Move that one? Okay, so we'll, we'll let staff clean that up. Seconded by Council McKenzie, all those in favor. And just a reminder to remember to use your mics because we are on Zoom. Okay, and now we're moving to the public and statutory hearing. So I've kind of forgotten how to do this, but I believe I start by uh, convening this public hearing meeting by reading all this stuff on this page. So that's where I'm going to start from. Um, the public hearing is being convened under the provisions of the British Columbia Local Government Act to hear submissions related to zoning amendment application bylaw number RZ2103, which concerns official community plan amendment bylaw number 252-2021 and zoning amendment bylaw number 253-2021. Bylaws number 252 and number 253 will, would rezone attractive land abutting park drive legally described as district lot 3852 KDYD, except uh, one plans H558, uh, 12907, 19332, 24061, and KAP70712. Uh, the second parcel parcel A, D, D, 250793F, and lot A, district lot 3852KDYD plan 24061, except plans 24951 and KAP 70712. This is the public's opportunity to make representations to council. All all persons present who believe that their interest in property is affected by the proposed bylaw shall be given a reasonable opportunity to be heard. Um, I, will I would ask those members of the public who wish to speak to please commence your address to council by approaching the podium, uh, writing your name on the sign-in sheet if you haven't already done that, um, and state your name to council uh, clearly. The main function of this public hearing is to listen to individuals. Council will not debate with you uh, the matter of the proposed bylaws with individual citizens, but members of council may ask questions of you following your presentation. Uh, no one will be or should feel discouraged or prevented from making their views heard. Your only opportunity to comment to the proposed bylaws during the public hearing as members of council may not receive further submissions of verbal or in writing after the close of this public hearing. This is a reminder of council to put away your cell phones and to and to encourage no further information be, is being received. Um, we have a presentation and I don't know, is it usually the point at this that we do the presentation or? Yes, we would start with the presentation. 
Sorry, Ursula? Yes, I think we will start with the presentation first, just to give the context of the proposal. Yes, and then I will ask for the public submissions from the uh, corporate officer. So go ahead, Ursula. Thank you for coming today. This is Ursula from the TNRD, or you can introduce yourself fully uh, as your title and role. Thank you. Perfect. Yes, thank you, Mayor and Council. So I'm Ursula, the planner at the TNRD, um, representing the District of Clearwater. And I also have with me Regina Sedilkova in Alex's uh, absence. He is now 100% in the EOC role um, with regards to the wildfires. So <clears throat> we're here for application rezoning 2103 for a zoning amendment that is submitted by property owner Doug Borrow, who is also the applicant and the developer. The proposal concerns two parcels on Park Drive, which have a combined area of about 54 acres. The western lot, which is shown as subject site two, is separated into two pieces with the smaller piece separated from the larger portion by the school district property. So the purpose of the rezoning is to enable a proposed subdivision of 84 lots. We'd like to emphasize that the plan shown is conceptual uh, to demonstrate the overall layout and lot configuration, but the developer is not restricted to this exact plan. The plan can still change um, prior to and through the subdivision process. The average lot sizes proposed are half acre in size, although the zoning could enable lots as small as 700 meters squared. So as part of this rezoning process, a portion of the property was negotiated for a community trail, which was envisioned as part of the trails master plan. And that trail is shown as the lower purple line on the map there as 7K. And 7J is shown as a proposed road, which would tie into the overall trail network. Um, but the one unpaved trail would be that uh, 7K. And that would also satisfy the required parkland dedication under the Local Government Act. The parcels are surrounded by numerous amenities, including the high school, parks, the sportsplex, as well as the hospital. There are single family residences to the south and east of the, pro of the properties and commercial uses are across the highway to the north. The parcels are overall flat and they're not impacted by steep slopes or water courses. However, there is an approximately 18 meter wide trans mountain pipeline running through the properties, which you can see as that untreed portion. And that's the portion that will be uh, dedicated as community trail. So these site photos provide some context. They show that the lots are currently vacant and treed. The top two photos are taken from Park Drive and the bottom two photos are taken from Highway 5. So both of the parcels are designated in the official community plan as urban residential. There's several policies in the OCP to support this proposal, including that this area, since the OCP in 2013, this area has been envisioned for increased densification. And it's recognized that new residential development should be directed to areas designated urban residential. So no changes are proposed to the OCP other than to redesignate the linear portion to park to make it very clear that the future land use for that linear portion will be as a community trail. But otherwise, the remainder of the parcels will stay as urban residential designation. Both of the parcels are currently zoned RL1 Rural, and so again, the owner wishes to rezone both of these properties to allow a subdivision of 84 lots and is proposing the R1 zone, which is residential, single family and duplex. And the linear portion that will be for the community trail would be proposed to be rezoned to P1 Parks and Recreation as part of this process, but the rest would be rezoned to R1. The, the proposed rezoning also includes a site-specific amendment to allow what we're calling duplex suites, and that's just for these specific lots. 
So we know the OCP is encouraging more ho housing types and density at this location. And we are aware there's a shortage of available housing stock and rental options. So as part of this rezoning staff worked with the developer, um, the developer was agreeable to allowing duplex suites on the subject site. Again, it doesn't mean that those are going to be built out as that, but it will enable that option. In 2019, the BC Building Code was changed to uh, make it easier and less onerous to put secondary suites within duplex units. And so now local governments can add this to their zoning bylaw. So that's why this is part of this rezoning proposal. It will allow flexibility and more housing options. And one of the big topics as part of this proposal is the interplay between the housing affordability and servicing capacity. So again, the since 2013, the OCP envisioned greater density at this location. The proposed rezoning would allow single family dwellings, single family dwellings with suites, duplex units and duplexes with suites. But the actual density and servicing will depend on the developer um, <clears throat> sorry, the actual density and the specific housing types will de depend on the developer and uh, the servicing. So the developer will have to connect to water and sewer and ensure that capacity and fire flow will be achieved for the proposed number of lots. Through consultation with the district's engineer, the engineer identified that offsite upgrades would be required for both the water system and the sewer system. And it's at time of subdivision that the developer will have to choose which options um, they want going forward for how they will connect to water and sewer. And again, that will all be determined at time of subdivision and fire flow will have to be met. The, the developer will have to prove compliance with the subdivision servicing bylaw at the time of subdivision. So servicing will of course have a direct impact on density. If the systems cannot handle extra density from suites, there's an option to impose limits via restrictive covenant during subdivision. The zoning will enable more housing types and increased density, but Again, servicing challenges will ultimately decide the number of lots and the types of housing. So again, we see the conceptual plan here. This can change at time of subdivision. Approving the rezoning means that a density will allow lots as small as 700 meters squared and the developer is proposing an average of half acre sized lots. And staff is putting forth a recommendation at today's meeting to to pass third reading following the public hearing. And with that, we will leave it open for questions. Thank you. Are there any questions of uh, Ms. Wallace? Ms. Wallace. Sorry, um, I'll just do the thing there. Yeah, thank you. Um, so uh, I'll ask now the corporate officer since I'm not seeing any questions from counselors now. Um, to confirm publication of the notice of the hearing as required by legislation. And was there any written submissions for this? Mr. Mayor, one submission was received. Okay. That's Thank you. Um, vote, run, what's that? Box 56, Clearwater, BC, DOE, 1 and 0. Clearwater, July 12, 2021. Address to Mayor and Council, and I will read the Better at this point. Dear Mayor and Council, RE zoning application RZ2103. I would like to have the following concerns addressed with regards to the proposed zoning change. I have concerns about highway and road access for the subdivision proposal. I would like to know who is going to pay for water upgrades, sewer, and water demands. Is a feasibility study done for traffic and for water and sewer? Is a feasibility study done for infrastructure? Of all the lights, will the cost of this be carried by the taxpayer or by, by developer upfront before development? Cost increases as home in need. Thank you in advance for addressing these concerns. You are extremely on WhatsApp. Thank you. Um, Ms. Wallace, I think, addressed most of that in the, 
here. So we're taking comments at this point. So is there anybody who wishes to speak to this? So I'm calling for the first time. Does anybody wish to speak? So step up to the podium and uh, state your name and write it down there. If we have a sheet up there, I'm not sure. Do we have a sign it sheet on the podium? Okay, you signed it up there. Okay, thank you. So state your name for council and fire away. Um, if you wish to, yeah, it would be great to start on again for the record. Sorry, you, you, you've got it written out there, and but 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 this is your opportunity, so I, I would be um, it'd be great if you'd be truly heard. Okay. Shopping center, walking around the drive, or directly behind us. So, um, yeah, it's just a very busy corridor. I can just see this office is not being seated. It's quite concerning the traffic. Any questions of council on the, the comments? Thoughts at this point? Yeah, that's Ursula from planning. She's she's uh, they're having technical issues, but the whole conversation is recorded as well. So, uh, in between, while I'm doing my um, mayor's report and we're doing our reports, we can have them listen back to the recorded portion. Slides. Yeah. 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 Okay. 
yeah, I, I, yeah. Thank you for your comments for sure. Take that under advisement. Um, is there anybody else who wishes to speak to this one? See Mr. Rotzer coming up. We'll just let you finish signing out and then Mr. Rotzer will come up. My name is Ron Hotsetter. Um, I guess a couple of thoughts uh, on that. Well, it's a great idea. What would be the right That's an option. And then also the concern I was fire flows is an issue. Water upgrades is going to be an issue. Of a uh, piece of property down the road as well that's going to require a substantial fire flow. What's going to happen to the projects that are going to be pending um, as far as if we're going into 88 lots or let's say 200 years, um, what's that going to do to the future of the property as far as fire flow goes? Have we got to upgrade it on the considered the neighboring properties and pursue it along? I guess that would be my main questions. Do you have any questions of Mr. Rotsetter on his presentation? Hearing that, and some of that's been addressed in the Ursula's presentation, but um, we'll get the rest of it when we can. Okay, and calling for a third time. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak and make a presentation to council? Come on up, Robin, I believe. Please sign in and state your full name. Okay. My name is Robin Forbes, and uh, regarding septic and water issues, um, Come up, but I don't really think they've been addressed. And so, really, what I want to get clarification on the representations that we're having the meeting, it says that nothing further can happen, but clearly there are going to have to be more discussions regarding this issue. And for one thing, has the Ministry of Environment been in any way involved with this? Answer that at this point, but generally it's handled through planning that the Ministry of Environment would be involved or any sort of referrals with the highways and the like would be done. So, so for clarity, this rezoning can occur without anything actually transpired. This is primarily about the trail use. At this point, sorry. <laughs> Okay, uh, any further speakers at this point? Uh, hearing none, I will call this, uh, declare this public hearing closed at this point and we'll move on. Council will have a further opportunity to address this in the agenda moving forward here today. Moving back to the regular agenda. Um, presentations, uh, none delegations. Jack Kehoe, come on down. Let's hear what you have to say about Vale Mount College. Thank you, Mr. Keo. Um, uh, can we just do an audio check um, with that mic? Can you can you just speak into the mic for a second, and we'll just ask those online if they can hear it. Sure. Check one two. Check one two. Check one two. Okay. We're just finding a little bit more. We we got a thumbs up from Councillor Bamford and, and uh, Ursula as well, so the world can so now hear you. Thank you. The mic, mic was bad on the last one, but it's really good now. Okay, so you could you could hear some of the last presentation, and now you can hear this. Okay, we're we're gonna probably have to correct a few things here. Thanks. Uh, go ahead whenever you're ready. I, I believe we're just getting your presentation up, and maybe we'll see if we can uh, remove the icons of the folks from the screen so we can see the whole thing as well. Oh, you can do that. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council, for uh, giving us this opportunity to uh, address Council and I guess the public regarding uh, the Vail, uh, Vailmont College. 
Um, it's, it's, a, it's a new venture, if I can say, uh, uh, as you'll see later on with the list of the directors, that um, uh, I guess through my former employment, I became involved with. And, and I thought by, I'd, I'd start by giving a, a little bit of a history to it. Let me get to get the next slide. Uh, I'll, I'll speak to the history and then we can address this later. So Valmont College uh, Society was uh, first incorporated in uh, uh, 2016. And uh, the uh, largely this concept of this college came about for a number of reasons. There were um, uh, there was a uh, potential uh, major ski development that was going to occur in Valmont, and plus there was a uh, there's a notion that there was going to be uh, additional sort of tourism opportunities and economic opportunities and employment opportunities. And the, uh, the genesis of this project really came forward from what's called the Vailmont Learning Center Society, which are our counterparts in Vailmont, and they also ran the Work BC programs in both uh, Vailmont and McBride. And they, through basically their client base, they saw this as, a, uh, as a, something that was going to, uh, I guess, uh, uh, improve uh, uh, for the community, but also improve uh, opportunities for employment particularly. They, uh, a number of things happened, of course, uh, starting with the, uh, uh, the ski hill development, um, I think it was called Glacier Mountain, Glacier Mountain Ski Development, which, and I don't know exactly the status of, of but I, it's at least on hold and it certainly hasn't, uh, is not proceeding as, as was anticipated. And then shortly after that, uh, COVID hit and, uh, uh, and so the, as the college was trying to get going, it just hit a fairly large stall. Now, <clears throat> we were aware of what they were attempting you know, to, to accomplish with the creation of this college. And, uh, and we also were aware that they were, they were facing some challenges. So we reached out to them roughly about a year and a half ago uh, because as we all know, we were, anticipating, um, we were anticipating some changes with the Thompson Rivers University operation uh, but we did not want to engage in, a, in any kind of uh, as committed conversation, but to let them know, uh, don't shut this down. We spent a considerable amount of money uh, to achieve their accreditation uh, status. And uh, we, we began to have some preliminary discussions with them. The, um, uh, as soon as the as Thompson Rivers announced its, uh, its closure of the uh, facility here, and, and elsewhere in some of the rural areas, uh, the rural communities, we then began to engage in some more serious conversation with Belmont College. Um, the, uh, I don't know if you want me to read the mission statement or the vision or the values, uh, they're, they're, they're pretty, um, but they're, uh, uh, they're fairly straightforward. They're somewhat specific to, uh, uh, to the Rocky Mountains and, and the geography of Belmont. Uh, over time, that will likely uh, change as we, uh, as we go forward. And uh, our hope is that um, we will be, I think one of the other challenges they had in Belmont is the size of the population. And they were hoping to attract students in, into the community. Um, our model looks at it differently. We're looking at trying to reach a population in the entire valley from Pride to Barrier and beyond. Uh, so because we know where Thompson Rivers used to be, and they used to be in Ashcroft, they're not there anymore. They used to be, uh, have a significant foothold in 100 mile host. They still have a, a facility that they rent, but no coordinator, as I understand. Uh, of course, not going to be available for the club. So we are looking to try, and if you will, to sort of backfill somewhat, but we also are of the, um, uh, but the Yellowhead Community Services Society is, is present and has a, uh, has locations in the national and, uh, and area. So uh, try to sort of piggyback somewhat on, uh, uh, on that pre-existing establishment, if you will. So the, um, the uh, uh, again, the model we would look at trying to uh, develop programs and services in, in the entire valley. Uh, we recently, and again, part of the reason for not uh, wanting to come here is because the, uh, Accreditation is um, is approved by the Ministry of Advanced Education, and 
B branch. And if maybe you can go to the next uh, slide. Uh, goes to the street. There we go. <laughs> so uh, the uh, so now with the Clearwater location being approved for first development, we can now proceed uh, to start developing some uh, some uh, employment and also other types of programs. Can you go to the next slide now? Um, again, it's um, the the uh, if I can say the the attraction, but the um, the fact that this was a provincially accredited institution uh, in our minds gave it um, uh, gave it a lot of uh, I guess credibility, if you will. Uh, Pillhead Community Services Society uh, could and has run those training certificates in the past. Uh, but, you know, actually having a formal college that was the accredited one, uh, we felt was, was the way to uh, sort of fill the void if you will, and to start trying to develop those kinds of, uh, uh, those kinds of training programs. Uh, can you go to the next slide? The, uh, so the existing courses, there were four, by the way. Uh, so the first one is the Tourism Administration, the Rural Entrepreneurship and Small Business Management, and the First Nations Cultural Tourism. They, Belmont College hired a full-time principal and spent a lot of money articulating and developing those courses. Uh, the First Nations Cultural Tourism, for example, in Simic and the Camp of Development got that course there. They um, uh, all the other all the other two. Th there was a fourth program, <clears throat> which was more of a wilderness um, backcountry adventure certificate. And that was the one that was really tied to the scheme of some, some of the secondary arrangements that may have uh, that may have spun out of the ski hill. We we decided to let that go, mostly because of insurance reasons, and that's not it's something we could pick back up again. <clears throat> we have all the modules, we have uh, you know the course outline, and <clears throat> the other thing I should I should state is that these courses have been approved. All courses have to go through PTIB. To meet their standards. So we're looking at the instructors, the, the curriculum, the modules, you know, the course design, all of that. Before. So these already have, have been approved. And the tourism administration is the one that we think we are going to be able to offer this fall. So uh, keep your eyes open for that. Uh, get you to go to the next slide. <clears throat> so our current directors um, uh, and co chair, we have Kenko as the uh, former. That was the executive director of Vailmont Learning Center Society. Uh, Wendy Dyson is, uh, has stepped down. And then, of course, Suzanne Butcher, who is here in the audience. Uh, Nikki McGinsey is the director. Uh, Dan Kenko is the principal of uh, senior secondary. And, and also, who is going to be uh, principal slash administrator, but she's going to do the coordination and development of that. So uh, that that's going to be going forward. That will be our direction. So when we looked at uh, you know some of the courses that we would uh, we would hope to offer, some of them are going to look fairly familiar for any of you that have looked at a true calendar in the past. Lynn's nodding her head, <laughs> um, and and so the, so the short term ones are more related to. You know, Employment services are with BC operations. And some of the more long term ones are, some of them are aspirational. Uh, I, and I think I can be honest when I say that. But others have either been run or have been you know, seriously considered. And, uh, and, and we do want to, we do want to uh, look at trying to bring those uh, longer term programs into the curriculum. Now, the short term ones we could run, we have first aid. Any of those things, we don't require any authorization or permission. The longer term programs that are going to require that certificate will we'll have to be, we'll have to again do the same thing, uh, create a course outline, uh, design the curriculum, and uh, uh, show samples of the course material, the instructors, all of that, and then have that approved. But again, um, many of these have been done you know, here in the community in years, in years going by. The um, one of the things we're, we're hoping to do, and again, uh, bear with me. I say some of this is not pushed, sorry, because, not raised questions that should be answered. 
even if it's an answer that it waits for subdivision. Hi, TNRD, you're a live mic. <laughs> Welcome to technology. <laughs> Um, so the, uh, uh, you know, it's not, it's not as if we're going to jump on the gas pedal in the fall and then start offering these courses. It's going to be a process. It's going, we're going to have to, to build to this. You know, the other thing too, which is going to be challenging for us, but again, we, uh, uh, we hope we have, uh, uh, some, uh, some ways to address these things. But, you know, if you look at it, at, uh, like the Thompson rivers, there, there's a huge subsidy that comes from, from the ministry education. I mean, student tuition does not pay for the operation of those universities. Um, so we are we are going to be looking at, in addition to tuitions, we're going to be looking at other funding sources to help lower those costs, make them uh, uh, reachable for for um, for learners, for students, um, and uh, uh, and I'm speaking specifically for longer term programs as opposed to the uh, more short term courses. The other thing too that um, at least to begin with, which we think is going to be a different approach or a different model is that uh, to begin with, we are not going to have a cap or a minimum as to how many as, uh, can be enrolled in some of these courses. We want to come out of the gates with no cancellations. And if you're enrolled in a course, that course is going to, uh, it's going to happen. And require some form of subsidy. We can do that. So this next year or so is going to be fairly, uh, fairly critical for us as we start to, to come off the ground uh, with this. The, um, just going through some of the notes as well too. So the um, uh, couple of the things that we're going to do as we, as we get going is, is and Carrie is working on this now, is, is to craft, craft an employer survey. We want to see what employers needs are. What, you know, what training needs do employers have? Because at the end of the day, they're going to be very critical uh, to this. The other is, of course, is what are the community needs? And we want to get that feedback. We'll be doing that in very, not just very well, but in other communities as well, too. We've reached out to other communities, Ashcroft and Hunter Mahos in particular. Uh, we've certainly got some interest uh, for this. And again, the flexibility around the, the model, uh, it could be that some courses are, are here, but we would maybe have students from around the region attend. Uh, some could be virtual. So we're going to use a variety of methods to try and, and build up that student population as, as we go along. Um, the, uh, the, one of the, one of the uh, presentations we'll be making after our presentation here, of course, will be to the Simp uh, Band Council and uh, also probably to the uh, Simp Resources Corporation to, uh, to inform them and advise them as to uh, what, uh, what the Elmore College is hoping to do in the Valley. And we'll be you know, looking for uh, input and uh, uh, feedback from you as well too. So I'll, I'll just finish up by saying, so you, you saw the, um, uh, the list of the board of directors. We're also uh, going to be including uh, other directors on that, which would uh, represent you know, employers, uh, maybe employee groups, but also other communities. Because so we want this, we've reached out to, again, uh, somebody with that, education background in Ashcroft, uh, similarly in Clearwater. And we want to um, we want to use that advisory committee. And again, some of you may have even participated in this. I was on the advisory committee uh, for TRU back when I think it was UCC, but uh, it became true. And so, but we want that advisory uh, committee to be robust and to really give some good feedback to us as we go forward. And I, and I will close by saying, this is probably one of the more difficult, challenging endeavors, projects that uh, I have been a part of personally, and I think uh, the other directors. Um, it's not like somebody's putting you in a video on a project and, and, you, and you've been awarded um, a level of funding. This is not like that. But we felt a, a real duty to, uh, because of again, running employment services and what's happened uh, with secondary education here, we felt a responsibility and duty to try and make this work. So we will do, be doing everything we can uh, to, to make Belmont College a success. And uh, in the future, if the name gets changed, if the other things get changed around it, uh, that will be up to the board and the advisory committee. 
want to we want to at least write that excellent yes thank you um just off the top i'd just like to say it's an uh, encouraging slate of courses and and uh basically a model that seems to really look like it's going to uh, be a good fit for, for Clearwater. So fantastic, fantastic working, you know, from your original presentation to, to now things look good. And council questions of Mr. Keogh. Comments. So Sam, go ahead. I think just a, a comment is that it's an incredible aspirational vision for the community. Um, the fact that uh, tourism is one of our, our, our four legs of the community to be able to integrate that. Um, I know even through SD73, there's a lot of the trades and technology, um, but there's lots of room to expand those opportunities and keep that homegrown focus staying in town of, of how you can actually, you know, live fully uh, throughout your life here and having that at uh, those opportunities. So thank you. And thank you to the team uh, for doing that. And, and maybe on that too. So we want to hire local instructors, local people. That's all part of it. We want this to be for a base to be here. I think just on the fact that you mentioned that TRU does come here to train their people. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we could turn that. I think we've got what it takes. Further question, uh, Councillor Fizzle, go ahead. I just, um, I'm happy to see that it's very familiar what you're running. I, I, <laughs> you know that, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's going to be nice to see those coming back and people being trained and being able to get a job. And it's just and we have, <clears throat> Use a political expression, but we have we have um, you know, big investment. We we run here at BC, we run the funding sources in Clearwater area, and uh, and for us to be able to offer or for for there to be the availability of courses in a timely fashion in the area is is important. So we have a big investment in this already to see this succeed. So. And I yeah, I don't know the other thing I'm thinking of. So I was going to get a hold of your dad. I'd like to go and see if you could teach a, a literary course on how to write a book, book on writing. <laughs> <laughs> the canned ham of Lac La Hache would be more than happy. He's got an honors English degree. Um, I need him out of the house. So yes, I'll send him to you. That's not a problem. Um, uh, any further questions or comments from staff? Yeah, I, I think I think what you alluded to, and I hate the word synergies, but the synergies between the YCS organization, the school board, this plan, um, it, and work BC, et cetera, and all the other services that you're involved in, I think it's a perfect fit. Um, and in a lot of ways, a much better fit than, than TRU ever was. Um, and I'm very excited to see this move forward. I think this is a great beginning to a, a new educational vision for our section of the Valley. Good work. Thank you so much. This was fun. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Um, I'm just going to bring up an item here now to Council um, on the advice of planning staff. Uh, I am going to suggest that we table um, item 17 under bylaws until all items under 17 A, B, and C until the next Council meeting or till uh, a special meeting that we may have to call. We'll have to decide that after this meeting. Um, just because of the technical difficulties and the feeling that in order to have uh, a fully rounded meeting, certain questions have to be answered or should have been answered by planning staff. Um, so if council's in agreement, we'll just remove those from the, the agenda at this point. Um, and then we can discuss it after this meeting when we're gonna go forward. Councillor Sim. Um, so just a question on that. We did have some inquiries from the public. I think the last one. So those are the types of questions that the TNRD will be able to assist us with. Yes, the planning department who is hired by yeah. the District of Clearwater. It's the District of Clearwater uh, contract and staff. Yes, and that's that's the that's their point is that those questions should have been answered in the public hearing, um, but, but due to mic issues on on our end and, and uh, technical issues hearing on, on their end. Um, that it's probably advisable that in order to have a proper hearing that we table this at this point. Councillor McKenzie. Uh, you said A, B, and C. C, can we carry on with C on this and move that one out of the way? You're correct. Item C is separate from this, so it would just be uh, A and B, so we can just move to that if that works. Okay. 
Um, no, so we're just tabled them. So it's just a decision that we don't move forward with at this point. Okay. So those will come off the agenda. So if anybody's hanging on to that one for now, it's not going to happen today. Moving on to reports, mayor's reports. Uh, the last couple weeks since the last meeting have obviously been, oh, still on here. Yes, it's hair straight back. Um, pretty much daily since the lit and fire emergency uh, TNRD meetings um, and updates. Um, obviously, our heart goes out to the people of Lytton for and the Lytton First Nations for the tragedy and the experience that they're going through right now. Um, I don't think any council in this province hasn't felt uh, a pang or a pain or a moment of sympathy on this one. Um, this is what we do. This is what they do. This is what they've gone through. Yeah, it, it's a huge tragedy. So um, those uh, sentiments have been passed on the TNRD. Um, I did a couple of vaccine roundtables with Interior Mayor calls. Um, as noted, there will be a clinic at the end of this month. At this point, it's uh, supposed to be a mobile clinic in a tent, but I do believe that, um, that uh, Interior Health is also tentatively secured inside um, use at the Sportsplex or another place, so that if it has to move inside to be a cool location, depending on where the heat wave is at that time, that option is available to them as well. Um, I did many in-person and online, uh, as well as phone citizen meetings, lots of concerns um, about evacuation, the beach, the boat launch, <laughs> all, the, all the usual suspects as far as things that people want to talk to. Um, did a little bit of work and messaging around the Candle Creek fire, obviously on Sunday. Um, congratulations to the citizens that got involved in that, and then our crews and BC Wildfire crews, excellent response on that. Uh, did a couple of interviews on the ambulance service changes coming in November this fall, um, both on uh, CBC uh, interior wide on Friday with Sarah Penton and the Mike Smith show yesterday morning uh, as well, province wide. And then uh, spoke about the new crossing on Wells Brain and that intersection on CPC um, with a basically uh, interview for the news report. Um, this morning was a doctor recruitment uh, committee meeting. Councillor Sims has taken a new role with uh, organizing some of that stuff, which is great um, as a, a new job separate from our council role. And um, I am going to be having lunch tomorrow with Justin McElroy of CBC News with a cameraman at the Hop and Hawk. And we're going to be eating barbecue and because Clearwater is in the contention on their list of BC's best small towns. So there you go. Um, and the other last other thing I did this morning, just to be annoying to myself and others, is I inquired, I put in the paperwork to inquire about having a Tesla supercharger station put in town. So this is initial, this is what would be required for our area. And then we get to see what their proposal or if they're even interested in talking to the district of Clearwater about that. So it's basically um, an online application and then they look at needs and then they'll bring it forward to our staff. And I have copies of this that I will give to the note takers um, so of my report. So uh, no need to frantically write, I'll just give you what I wrote down. Uh, moving okay. out, Councillor Bamford. Thank you, Mayor Blackwell. And uh, the council, I'm sorry, I'm not there in person, but my current life situation continues to preclude me from attending. And thank you for allowing the flexibility to do this on Zoom. First, I'd like to thank the CEO and the mayor for the really good situation updates during the past week on the fires and the small fire up by Campbell Creek. Really, really useful. And I think it putting it on, on Facebook and stuff is really a tier of reports. Um, I had a chance to have a very short meeting with our new CEO, Mr. Thomas. Really enjoyed the discussion. Really happy to see him and I'm glad to hopefully I'll be able to have chats uh, more with him in the future. I had a couple of short conversations with our mayor just for updates, uh, mostly on the phone and stuff like that. So I appreciate the mayor's time. Um, discussions that I've had really with, with neighbors and some phone calls have um, really revolved around what the mayor alluded to, which is a possible evacuation. I think some of the questions that are out there are, um, how, can you pre-registration at a reception center? Where would that be? How do you do it? Um, where would you be going? 
if you have to evacuate and what the reception centers do. So I know there's just a big void of information out there and looking online, um, you can try to find what you can. Um, the only other thing that, that pretty much concludes my report, I, I've been staying up on all my emails and I've read the full agenda. My only other comment and I apologize is when my phone rings, I will have to step away from the meeting for a while for a weekly medical call that we have. So that concludes my report. Thank you, uh, Councillor Bamford. Yes, um, the information, there's a lot of information out there and I think maybe as a role of council through our uh, Facebook page and perhaps a specialized newsletter, I was thinking maybe we should put out what's going to happen in the event of, a, of an evacuation and some of those priorities. And, and Councillor Herring has a lot of experience in that thing. So I'm sure we can kind of elbow him to give us some direction on resources. That would be great. Um, moving on, Councillor Frizzle. Well, I just wanted to welcome our new chair, Mr. Thomas. We sort of wanted you to ease in, but you threw you in the deep end. So. No luck there. <laughs> so, yeah, I do appreciate all the work that done. You did a good job of inspired the work that went for you. I, because I've fielded several calls from seniors about an evacuation plan, and I was the person who was handled an email from the fears that they had. Um, and yeah, I, I still, I helped a lot of people navigate the um, homeowner's grant online. There was a lot of tension on that one. And so it was easy to just talk them through it on the phone. Yes, we have a day to do that. And the rest of the time, it's just going to stay through. That's my report. Yeah, no doubt on that one. And uh, I think we'll uh, also use your advice um, when it comes to uh, seniors networking on how to get message out for all sorts of things this summer as well. So thank you for your report. Councillor Herring. Yeah, I just would like to echo the earlier comments. Excellent work from everyone on the fire preparations and the communications. Um, I think it's totally normal to see Facebook speculation explode in an emergency now. That's totally expected in almost every response. So it was great to see everybody on it right away. The messaging clear, I felt kept up to date. I think, I think that was excellently done. And that's all I've got. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it comes faster than you could ever imagine. I'm sure you're experienced that in, in other situations where it just has a mind of its own. Councillor Herring, or sorry, Councillor McKenzie. Yeah, thank you. Good busy luck. couple of weeks, <laughs> hot, hot, busy couple of weeks. Yeah, I'd like to start off uh, also welcoming Mr. Thomas to the team. Uh, look forward to working with you, as I'm sure the rest do. And hopefully the wolves have been fairly tame that we got thrown into. <laughs> uh, but also echoing everyone else about the uh, updates on the fire, which is, I'd like that up to date, reliable resources, and it helps keep the rumor mill in check. And, especially small towns. And I think back to when I started on fires before there was social media and you just went out and did it, cleaned it up. And before anyone even knew it, there was a fire, it was out and you were on to the next one. So it's, yeah, as Councillor Herring said, uh, everyone seems to blow up with their speculation. So thanks for that. Uh, not much to report on my end. Uh, this heat wave kind of engulfed me in work since about the 23rd of June. So not a lot of council action out of me here this last couple of weeks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And, and thank you for your comments about what you're hearing from the public. I think that's very important to share with council as a whole, um, how people are feeling anxiety levels, because that's what we are going to have to deal with, with the weather forecast for the summer and the fire situation. So it's very useful to have that information. Councillor Sim, your turn. Um, welcome again. And I think that one of the most exciting things that's happened is no masks. <laughs> So although they'd be very helpful with some of the smoke, um, I think that that has been a really good emotional boost for some people who were feeling that. And I think that there's been great delight at seeing people face to face and making those community connections. And I think as we go through this heat wave and the potential uh, fire season, having that human connection is something that was, was really needed. Um, and so, and I, I do appreciate um, that our community is still wearing masks and there's still some, some real hesitancy. And I've, uh, admired and appreciated um, people being sensitive. Not everybody, not everybody's out and out in the open. Um, so people seem to be able to find their where they need to be, be met. So I think that was kind of a good news story. Um, the other good news story is the first races at the racetrack. 
Um, that was really, you know, what a fun show and certainly an addition. And uh, I think Councillor Taylor's daughter was just, you know, <laughs> outstanding. Dukes of Hazards just kept running through my mind watching her out there. <laughs> um, but a I know, but she did it with the Daisy Duke kind of style. So, but she was wearing long pants. I just want to <laughs> say that. Um, anyway, again, another, you know, it felt like things were, were starting to kind of pick up, a, pick up a bit of a dance beat um, in town, which, which has been, been nice that way. I also want to say that um, Raft River has been endorsed to go forward with their outdoor classroom. So I think that that's going to be exciting. Uh, Raft River will also be welcoming a new vice principal um, in September. Uh, so that's new news there. Uh, we did talk about uh, the recruitment meeting uh, today. In September, we will be welcoming two new physicians to our community. Uh, Dr. Chi is coming on his own to start off with, and then his family may join him. And then Dr. Um, Sandra, she is coming with her husband and three children uh, who are already registered in the school. She seems super, super keen. And if anybody knows a knitting club, her daughter would like to join. So I think we're going to just start one is what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was really Retention. neat. And her, her, her children yeah. are going to get involved with hockey and um, uh, with, with skating. So there's lots of opportunity there. We also have the um, option to host two medical students uh, at the end of July. And I'll look to the mayor for guidance on this one. Um, we do have a recruitment budget. They are coming to check out um, communities in the interior where they might want to land. It would be nice to be able to host them the way that we used to in the old days is this would be a time to bring forward a motion for that or how would you like to handle that Mayor Blackwell? yeah i don't necessarily know need if we know you know if we need a motion for I that i don't know if, either but i'm looking to if, if, if we're if you're asking for dedicated Money. funding or covering of hotel rooms or what are we looking yeah, for? yeah so there are two young fellows and what's exciting about them is that they've committed to actually practicing together um, and so if we have that opportunity, as, as I said in the call today, uh, these two young fellows, um, they wanted to, their, their hopes are to land in Clearwater, Lillooet, uh, Lytton, or Ashcroft. And they've been to those areas um, frequently. So they knew Clearwater is the one that they haven't been to the most. So uh, we've just kind of stepped up. So it would be great to host them for a night. Um, do a dinner with them and then maybe an activity and then set them up for tours around the hospital, which will be taken care of by IH. Um, but yeah, just looking for some funding uh, to be attached to their visit. Yeah, and I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna leave that with Ms. Shepherd if we need to make an official motion to that at some future point, maybe retroactively. I think we have fun, funding in the recruitment budget that we could probably access for um, covering hotel rooms and I think that's a fantastic idea so um, and you know a little bit of a hosting budget for that I think that's what it's there for so we'll just leave it at that for now is that fair Ms. Shepard? Thank you. Thank so you. just to be clear they're coming July 25th so if we meet here soon. Yeah no and, and I don't I don't I don't believe we need a motion for this I think everybody at the table would be in agreement with this and I think we just leave it to staff to, to if we, those expenses are there somebody can clarify from staff if we actually do need a motion to spend this money but I'm not seeing that at all. I would recommend it. Okay <laughs> make a motion then. Uh, so I'd like to uh, make them uh, make the motion to uh, spend up to you could just cover two nights hotel accommodations plus expenses up to five hundred dollars up to five hundred dollars for a, a recruitment, a recruitment budget. trip for the, our two positions okay uh second on that seconded by councillor frizzle all those in favor i don't think we really i don't not seeing any need for discussion everybody's somewhat in favor of that they're two young doctors definite need in this community so we'll just go with that so you have it in the form of a motion Everybody's covered. We're good to go. Great. Anything and then further? Just, so yeah, just ahead. the last one to update you on it. So as part of this new job, it's, which is, I really have no idea what I'm doing. So we're making it up. But I got to attend a virtual um, sort of forum for international medical graduates. So they need to do um, a three-year return of service. In our community, we are eligible for up to two students. So we had 12 candidates. It was kind of like speed dating. Um, 
And so there's a really great opportunity there. These are Canadian students who had to uh, be educated abroad and then want to come back. And then the ministry assigns them into areas that are, are demonstrating need. So it's a really good opportunity for that, that rural community. So we've got the opportunity for two. Uh, so we're putting on, um, we're, doing a, we're doing a great sales and marketing uh, campaign for those ones. So there may be more opportunity to, to use some of those dollars, but I think it's exciting what's happening and uh, our, positioning our community. And then if the mayor can get us winning one of the top 10 small communities. I'm really counting on the hop and hog, uh, overwhelming them with barbecue tomorrow. Um, today's, they were, today they, uh, it was Justin McElroy's who are the province with his camera, Matt, doing video, Twitter, and audio. Today was a ham sandwich in Rock Creek. So I think we can do better than that. It was a very good looking ham sandwich. Rock Creek, but it was still from the Petro camp. Anyways, I think we can do better than that. Okay. Anyway, that, thank you for the opportunity to update. Uh, okay. Moving on to Councillor Taylor, um, whose daughter apparently always trophies. Anyways. Yeah, she told me she, Mom, I'm the trophy girl. I'm like, what does that entail? Anyway, um, so I uh, attempted the Trails Task Force uh, meeting on, I think it was the 7th of Ju July. Uh, 7th of July, gosh, it feels like so long ago. Um, and so I'll give an update in my report later on that. Uh, yes, I attended the Speedway for the opening day. Uh, super exciting to see that back in the community. Um, I echo all of Council's comments around um, uh, the communication response in particular around the wildfires um, and welcome Mr. Thomas. I also welcome back our uh, public, great to see you again. Um, see your smiles on your faces. Uh, looking forward to your comments later. Um, great to have you back. Um, and finally, congratulations to all of our graduates as well. Um, oh, I nice think that, and said, that yeah. happened since our last council meeting. I always love seeing those photos on Facebook from all the parents, um, all those smiling faces, and, and happy graduates. So congratulations. Thank you so much. Yes, the uh, the expressions of freedom crossing all those parents' faces was magical. Oh, and all the beautiful grads as well. So, yes, handsome ones as well. Um, uh, moving on to Committee of the Whole Minutes, uh, Parks and Rec, there is a recommendation. It's park and Rec yep. today. Uh, recommendation that the minutes of the Parks and Recreation Committee of the Whole meeting held June 15th, 2021 be received. Seconder. Seconded by Councillor Herring, we'll go with that. All those in favor, that passes. Committee with the whole reports, economic development, Councillor Frizzle. Um, there was supposed to be a meeting earlier today, but we have moved it on until uh, the fall. You did want to speak a little bit to, oh, were you? Okay, sorry, uh, not to, uh, I believe Councillor Bamford has now left um, for his thing. So next infrastructure meeting is August 17th. Uh, Parks and Rec, Councillor McKenzie. Next meeting, September 7th, and we do have two recommendations here to go through. Okay. Uh, first one being that the process for the development of a Parks Master Plan be added as a business case for consideration in the 2022 budget. And that said, Parks Master Plan address the establishment of a dog park. A dog park. Do I have a seconder on that? Councillor Herring, uh, all those in favor? Thank you, that passes. Second one, uh, that staff be directed to provide cohesive and designated parking options for the boat launch, including signage regarding parking available at 37 East Parkland property. Okay. Second on that. Seconder. Second. So Sim, thank you. All those in favor? Thank you. Finance and audit, Councillor Herring. Next meeting is December 7th. Thank you. Standing committee reports, Joint Services Advisory Committee. We had a meeting uh, yesterday morning. Actually, we didn't have a meeting. Uh, we didn't meet quorum due to a couple of absences in town. Um, so it was no big deal. We pushed it off uh, until September for the next one, I believe. Um, if we need an emergency meeting or an extra meeting, um, we'll discuss that with TNRD because they are chairing and setting agendas and we just don't know what this year with the fire situation. So we'll just leave it at that for now. Um, ta Trails Task Force meeting, Councillor Taylor. Yep, so uh, we were going to have a meeting this evening, but that's going to be postponed um, till most likely next week. 
Uh, we do have a recommendation here. I'm going to actually amend the recommendation um, and just to remove uh, my name uh, in the um, appointments because my appointment is done through the regular kind of schedule of uh, council representation. Uh, so the recommendation is that the appointments of the current Trails Task Force Committee members, Heather McLennan, Darren Coates, Sabine Cooperman, Ron van der Zwan, and uh, Scott Lindbergh, uh, be extended for a further two-year term ending July 2023. Cool. Uh, yeah, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Um, I just wondered uh, where uh, Ms. Groove fit in that. So because Ms. Groove's just been appointed, we don't need to reappoint her. She was only appointed okay. as of July 1st. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so this is the uh, reappointment of the terms for the people who were appointed in 2021. So it was just up for renewal, whereas Ms. Grew was, was just appointed um, recently as of July 1st. Uh, yes, uh, so all um, citizen representation on the Trails Task Force will be uh, extended until 2023, including Ms. Grew. So Ms. Grew is still on the <coughs> committee. Okay, thank you. Uh, do a seconder on Sorry. that. Seconded. Councillor McKenzie. All those in favor? Thank you. Um, junior council. That would be me and that next meeting is fall 2021. Thank you. Forestry Working Group, Councillor Bamford is still not back online. Uh, there's a recommendation that the minutes of the Forestry Working Group held uh, March 9 be received. Can I get a seconder on that? Thank you, Councillor Herring. All those in favor? Past. Community Economic Development Task Force. Um, it says Councillor Taylor, but it's going to be exactly. Councillor um, Frizzle. Go ahead. Um, so that's um, there's a recommendation at the minutes that the Community Economic Development Task Force meeting held February 2nd, 2021, and May 11th, 2021. Be received. Okay. Thank you, <coughs> Councillor McKenzie. Seconding. All those in favor? And now comments on that. Yes, and I just wanted to mention that on June 16th, we had Brian Fair here. He was the one that bought the Canfor properties. Um, it was a really interesting meeting. We had, um, I think most of the committee, um, the community members came. He's got lots of energy, lots of ideas. He's working with SIMP. He's working with businessmen around here. Um, and he's very, very willing to work with business, um, the community and businesses on ideas for the properties that he has here, the ones that are flat. Um, the speedway is on his property so he's looking for business ideas to come forward and meaning that he wants someone to come forward with an idea that they want to pursue with so come forward with an idea and a business plan and he'll sit down and listen he's, he's very open that way um it, it was a real i thought it was a very exciting meeting and i think he's i think he's an asset to the community so i hope people take him up on the offer yeah, for sure. And just to, to further on that, yeah, he really does seem very open about making, letting things happen here. He, he, he wants to be the facilitator of these things. He does not want to build new businesses himself. He's already done that enough in life. So if you come with a plan, money, um, and, and uh, you know, the will, he, he'll listen to pretty much anything by the sounds of it. We were talking uh recycling composting facilities things like that for making soil water bottling plants came up all sorts of ideas came up at this at this meeting um but you know he built a, a billion dollar enterprise with his uh bid uh company and um, i think he just wants to more be a very good landlord slash advice giver slash facilitator in this new role in his life. So um, it was a very, very inspiring meeting um, and he's such a friendly guy. Um, moving on, where are we? Sorry, uh, tourism well, it's great, Councillor Sim. Uh, so the next meeting was scheduled for tomorrow, but they have just sent out a note saying that they've chosen to cancel that and will reschedule for early August. But there is a recommendation that the minutes of the Tourism Wells Gray meeting till June 2nd be received. Thank you. Seconder on that. No second. Thank you, Councilor McKenzie. All those in favor? Uh, Wells Gray uh, Community Forest Commission, Councilor Bamford, I see you're back online. Yes, thank you. Um, there is a recommendation, and the next meeting will be when it's called. But the recommendation is that the minutes of the meeting that was held March the first be received. 
Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Taylor this time. Thank you. All those in favor. And then moving on to staff reports, we have our first CA report. Um, CAO, Mr. Thomas, um, are there questions or uh, anything of council on there? I, I note that there's quite a section on uh, our water system under public works. So I'll just let you digest that a little bit, but um, I, I'm getting the feeling that we need to start doing a little bit on uh, water restrictions here that we really haven't done in a lot of other communities are. So uh, I'm just gonna maybe let staff delve into the report a little bit. It's my first council meeting. I'm happy to be here uh, in the community as well. My baptism by fire is still ongoing and uh, <laughs> my transition plans have certainly significantly changed from what originally intended but we will get back to the plan in due course. I'll let Maurice, um, who is the interim public, man, uh, public works manager speak to the public works section of the report. Um, but if there's any other questions, please let me know. Questions of, of staff on this. Um, uh, I had a, a brief conversation with Morris on the issues, just sort of clarifying the, the water flow issues in the last sort of month or so. Uh, you did sort of mention to me that we've gone, you know, we have a high water consumption rate in Clearwater over average communities on average uh, throughout the course of the year, but we've basically doubled consumption since the heat wave. Is that correct? And maybe go, tell us a little bit more about that. Yes, uh, your worship through the council. Um, we used last Wednesday about 4,000 cubic meters. And a week later, we almost doubled that to 8,000. So that's, that's significant. And a lot of pressure to, to keep up to supply that amount of water. So um, we've looked around and tried to understand why this is happening. And yeah, there are probably leaks out there, but that's not the main problem right now. The main problem is usage. And I've given around the community after hours, and I've noticed a lot of sprinklers on. I shouldn't be on, so I've given notices out nicely just to remind people that times and that so that that does help but um, there needs to be some future uh, regulations I think on the hands. Yeah Councillor Bamford go ahead. Yeah having thought about this quite a while over the past few years you know we have four hours in the morning and four hours at night on the odd days of the even days and four hours to me seems to be quite a bit of time when really you can your lawn probably even if you're going to keep it green probably it needs an hour of water a day sort of a thing so i'm not sure what the best time would be but i for myself i wouldn't have the slightest problem with looking at that portion of it and saying you know there's two hours in the morning and two hours at night and maybe have them switch so that early morning or mid-morning or later in the evening but i think that's one place we could look at sort of restricting it and conserving some of the water yeah for sure uh, further comments or questions on the section of the report? I am seeing, you know, there's a, I follow a lot of other communities on Facebook and uh, watch their posts through the news, uh, Twitter and other places. Um, I'm seeing water restrictions in those community places like Later, Lady Smith um, and other places that um, are far in excess of what we're doing here. And their active messaging on it is much louder and present than ours. And I, and I know as a council, we really haven't pushed that in the past, but I think, I think seeing these numbers and the pressure that we've had on the well systems, our, our various water systems, um, the fact that we have a new well and we still are treading water, so to speak, uh, to keep up with uh, reservoirs and things like that says that we, we really need to have a, you know, all work as a team on educating the community about water usage. Um, especially with the situation here. Councillor Taylor, thank you for putting your hand up so I can stop talking. <laughs> I was just going to say uh, in agreement with, with what you're saying, really. Uh, like I think more communication, more education, um, uh, some of the why. Why is it so important? Like we need to make sure we've got water for if there's a fire incident and things like that, like, you know, kind of um, as well as obviously ongoing uh, needs, but just kind of more education, um, what can people do to be smarter with their water and, and, uh, and kind of put that messaging out there um, a lot more? I think that would be great. Yeah. Councillor Herring? 
and more of a question. I just wanted to ask, are automatic watering sprinkler systems included in our current bylaws? Like, will they be covered by the watering restrictions? Um, I believe that most of the stuff in the district that's on automatic for our stuff has been addressed by staff. Um, the school board and others, I do not know that, but maybe that's something staff can look into, or unless you have already comments on that. Um, there are a few systems around town. The, the, the info center has one, a lot of the hotels have one. And, you know, I, I'm quite sure there's been a lot of effort by our new hotel to save their new sod oh, um, I, I couldn't I, you know I have great sympathy for them on that one and you know I, I have an awareness of how much money that costs to put that sod down so I'm gonna squint on that one a, a little bit but the rest of it yeah we have a we have a serious water overuse problem in this in this town and education I think is critical so further thoughts or questions I mean it's a very thorough report it's amazing the amount of stuff that's mm -hmm. been done here so many so many positive comments on the paving um you know it, it's funny when people start complaining about being uh inconvenienced by things getting fixed for the first time in 20 or 30 years um yeah but overall having driven around this community with the improvements done to roads some of the stuff that's happening at the intersections um, on the highway um place looks fantastic mm -hmm. um, public work staff um our parts contractor, everybody else on top of it. Um, compared to other places I drive through, we look fantastic, but we do need to, we as a council need to support what they're doing with good messaging and getting out there. Councillor Sam. I'm just wondering, because the messaging, and it seems it needs uh, efficient and timely messaging. Uh, and I'm wondering if our website has the capacity to even do like a scrolling um, update system. Uh, so, for example, we need to kind of wait to load a page that's loaded on the front, as opposed to um, that, almost, I'm going to call it a blog, for lack of a better word, but, you know, April 16th, watering restrictions in effect, and it just keeps rotating and gives the quick and dirty types of updates, same thing with anything to do with fire alerts or anything. I, I always concern about having too much dependency on social media, because not everybody's there. Yeah. Um, but if that way is a really easy way, and I think that there's a way to do it so that if it's updated in our feed, then it's also updated on anything social media or vice versa. Um, and I think that will that help with some of our watering restrictions? Will that help with education about, you know, what to do in case of a fire or anything like that? Um, but is there a way to incorporate it or is it necessary? I always think, I mean, I agree with you. And I, I think there's always a need to look at our website and, and to modernize it or find good examples of how things work out there for, for that particular messaging. I think at this point, there's an extra sense of anxiety. And I mm -hmm. think we're all feeling that. I think everybody in the audience is feeling that right now. Um, so maybe this is the time that we do some extraordinary measures on communications when it comes to things like mail out newsletters. And, like, and I don't wanna really add work to staff. But um, maybe we ask, yeah. I think if we asked our uh, our web designers, because it, I mean, it's it's easy to do. They need to do it, and then what it does is it allows for. I mean, look at the Ski Hill website. You could not get more basic than that. But anything that's posted in social media, it's posted on the website. So it's only a one step as opposed to a two step. Um, and mm -hmm. maybe our our web designer can help us with that. But I will leave that for staff and the mayor. Um, yeah, I think I think yep. we're having the discussion here so that we yep. can talk about it. And we'll see what we can be done behind the scenes without uh, creating too much extra work and maybe relying on outside help for that. Yes. Cool. Um, if there are any further questions on the report, because it is quite a long report, uh, feel free to talk to Mr. Thomas um, after the meeting or present questions through me. It's fine. Um, moving on, active transportation and infrastructure grant. Um, somebody wish to speak to that. This is grant application under BC Active Transportation Grant of up to a maximum of $500,000. I would move the recommendation because it's so fantastic. <laughs> so I, I can speak to this. Part. Yeah, if you'd like wow. to speak to it as part of the Trails Committee. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, so this is brought forward by the Trails Committee. Um, the latest intake for the BC Active Transportation Grant uh, is open. Uh, I think the deadline of July 31st, hence we want to kind of push this through and get the application in. 
Um, the, the project itself is one you should be familiar with, and, and that's the trail um, down from uh, the roundabout to the World's Great Inn. Um, and this would be really, you know, the, I don't know if it's the icing on the cakes, it's probably more to come, uh, but, but we're really important in kind of providing that connectivity um, and, and, you know, really connect, like we've, we've got um, obviously the Windhaven path already done, um, the, we already have um, uh, plans in place for um, the trail down to the beach, uh, the trail down to Steaks Hill, uh, and this will kind of connect um, all of our three main cores essentially this would be the last piece um so i'm definitely super supportive of, of the grant going in um on the numbers uh it would be a 70 percent um, grant 30 uh, percent matching uh, and the matching funding would come from uh funds already secured from the world's great uh, community forest commission um that was essentially put put aside to donated for the purpose of, of matching funds um so uh, so i think there's really i say no downside obviously there's there's work required to get the application in um and then obviously work required to oversee the project um but uh but i think this is a super exciting opportunity uh for connecting our trails yeah um councillor sam do you have a comment just i wondered you've got all of the the usual suspects for the great support letters i did wonder if there was room if or if it was needed to have one from the the seniors um society and the reason for that is because as an act of transport and how it's enhanced a lifestyle that has been a, a community segment that i have noticed a, a remarkable uh, shift in it. whether or not that would help i leave that for operations i just share it as an observation of the support letters I can take that back to okay. the task force. In our next meeting, we'll be spending our entire time putting an application together, I think. So. Any comments to staff on this one? Are you all good on this so far? Because it's new. Just leave it to that. So um, it was moved. Did we have a seconder on that? So, Councillor Herring, all those in favor? Okay. And, and just moving forward on this, I think we all agree um, that um, project management's with outside help probably would be a good idea on a lot of things like this um, for capacity. Um, we are still a very busy town. There is a lot of things going on. Um, moving on to item C, grant and aid for Clearwater My Minor Ball. I believe staff has taken this to them and they've come back with what they need. So there is a recommendation there. Thank you, Morris, Scape. Thank you for all your help, by the way. You're doing a fantastic job and it's great having your set of eyes, ears, and opinions in this town. Yes, thank you. So granted aid on minor ball, thoughts, comments, recommendation. Well, we did it for hockey, we did it for curling. And, uh, yeah, it's it's I a hard one because- help these guys out too. Yeah, it's a hard one because they're not, they don't generate income in the exact same way as everybody else. But I think it's critical after two years, if I if I can say this, and Councillor Sims is going to say the same thing or something similar. We need all these organizations to survive. Mm -hmm. this, exactly. And that's what's critical mm -hmm. at this point. Further thoughts? Yeah, it's certainly that that's definitely it. But we were actually in Barrier this past weekend for provincials, twenty teams. Um, Up and running in Barrier already. It was the provincial, so they came from as far as Terrace. Wow. So I think where that direction is, and our team uh, came, got silver. Um, so yeah, but it just really demonstrated, um, and I, I will, and it's Stephanie, if you're listening, please don't print this, but Clearwater, when they put on a tournament, knows how to put on a tournament. Our community really shines. Like it's a really great thing. And I think that even this small, small amount of money will allow that club to keep going. There was lots of chat about even bringing back the adult slow pitch, reviving it as a social engagement. The amount of money that's on there for tournaments. Blue River is having a slow pitch tournament um, sold out. So that is a, that's a hidden asset that maybe we just have to revive. So I think this is going to be just that nugget that's going to keep it going. Okay, further? Did we get this moved and seconded? I'll move it. Second. <laughs> ah, Councillor Taylor beat you to it. All those in favor? Thank you. Um, 2021 second quarter financial report. Ms. Shepard, that's yours, I believe. Thank well, it better be that. yours because we trust you with all this. 
Thank you, Mayor Blackwell. Um, quarter two is usually pretty boring. We were just headed, we're just heading into summer for the capital projects, so we haven't started a lot of those yet. Um, as you can see from the report, none of the expenses are over budget, um, and the revenues that we knew were going to be low are are low. The recreation revenues, right? But now that things are opening back up, hopefully we'll kick back into gear. So everything's going as planned. Thank you. Uh, questions on this one? Uh, Councillor Fizzle first, yeah. Thank you, <laughs> through the mayor. No, we have an outstanding receivable for property taxes. So it shows us revenue as soon as we bill it out. Um, and just to let you know that at, we did do a calculation to see what the collection rate was at on penalty date, July 2nd, because um, we were a bit low last year. Um, normally we're in the 92 to 95% range of collection on current taxes. And we're back up at 92 again this year. Okay. So we're fairly normal then. I mean, considering the chaos that was expected in this front, that's fantastic. Thank you to all your staff during collection time. I watched, watched and listened to it a lot of the, the door of my office there. Um, excellent job, um, especially with the information across the front desk. Um, any further questions or comments on this? So thank you for that. Now I've lost my place again because I'm blocked. Um, thank you. Pages here. So 17C is where we're moving now. So development variance permit DVP 21-01. There is a recommendation in the development variance permit number DVP-2101 for 345 Helmican Street, Lot 65, District Lot 73, KD, YD, Plan 22173 be issued. Um, this is the garage that strayed slightly off of the allowance. Um, thank you. Seconded. Seconded by Councilor McKenzie. I think this is a fairly simple one. We've dealt with a few like this before. Um, all those in favor? I'll make that too much of a pain. Um, moving on to correspondence response required. There aren't any on this agenda at this point. There are an awful lot of information items. So if you wish to speak to an information item, um, I'll go down the list here. Um, ECEHS, item A. Thompson Nicola Regional District Building Inspections. And we can always go back to one if there's one you're, you're looking at um, C, Town of Spalamsheen, D, City of uh, Pitt Meadows. Oh, Councillor Bamford. Um, on C, the City of Nokomane, dealing with the residential rates yes. and asking to extend the review. I okay. think just want to point out that Clearwater really is in the same situation. You either have propane or electricity because there is no natural gas. Yeah. So I wasn't even aware of the discussion before, but Supporting an extension of that discussion may be worthwhile, especially for rural communities where that's your only two options. I don't know what the rate change would be, but it could have a significant impact on lots of people in the community. Yeah, for sure. Spallum team is, is incredibly active on, on uh, advocacy um, for the size of the town. So, um, yeah, I mean, we could do a letter of support on this, but um, maybe we'll leave that to the next council meeting. So unless you want to move forward at this point. If, if not, thank you for your comments. Uh, City of Pitt Meadows, uh, item E, Colwood. Uh, CN Rail is item F. Uh, Government of Canada Community Revitalization Funding Application, item G, Councillor Sim. Um, so what I wondered on this, and, and I'm a bit curious because they sent it out on the same day that there was an intake. Um, so not a big, big leeway, but what I wondered is if this would not be an opportunity uh, to do our wayfinding signage as well as put up, and can, yeah, this was Mayor Blackwell's uh, idea this morning, is to do a digital community sign. And I wonder if this fund might cover it. A digital sign would update, uh, what, sorry, go ahead. That one wasn't mine, but it was at that meeting. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> um, but a digital sign would certainly assist with, um, you know, the information vaccines, fires, you know, watering restrictions, all of that. 
Again, it ties into all the great work of the Trails Task Force in terms of wayfinding. And especially if this grant gets uh, completed, that wayfinding could actually have directional things. We could do it in partnership with SIMP First Nations, very similar to what uh, Vancouver and other communities have done, and have our Indigenous uh, naming underneath it. It is also supported under the um, CEFD, so the Community Economic Development. We've got two reports that cite the wayfinding as being important, uh, one the SFU one and then the subsequent one. Um, that wayfinding is actually in the 2021 initiative. So in terms of the short timeline, I think we've got enough information that we could put something together. Uh, I don't want to burden anybody, but it, it, a short timeline, if we did something quick and um, specific, is it, is it feasible and would it be beneficial? I don't know if we have time on that one. I'm just going to say that up front, um, but the staff can comment if they want. I, I just, the, the timeline is so quick on this. Unfortunately, you know, I, I have a feeling there's going to be more of these, but yeah, I'm just going to say that. But staff, staff, staff wants to comment on it. I'm going to say 10 days away is a little bit tough with all the things we got going on and basically a constant state of awareness. It is going to be tough. Um, that being said, was there a motion in the previous meeting for a signage and stuff? No, no, there, there isn't. Uh, it basically, I saw this and I'm like, okay, that's a crappy timeline. So I, I completely share that. It, it, and then I wasn't going to say anything, but then the meeting this morning, it did talk about a digital billboard and some of that wayfinding. And I thought, gosh, it does tie in. Um, wildfires is a good instigator. Is there, is, if, if it's investigated and it can be like a three paragraph thing that talks about it, we do have documentation that could support the request by way of documents that are in place. So from, yeah, from the community economic development and probably, um, you know, through the mayor and about wildfire like that. If it was quick and easy, great. If not, no way, but I don't know. That's it. I just oh. share this. I, Put it up for discussion. I'll investigate uh, the requirements, and if it's something we can do, I'll report back to Council offline. Thank you. I think that's fair enough. Councillor Taylor. I was just looking at the wording, and um, it says the assessments will begin on July 23rd, and the applicants are strongly encouraged to submit by this date, but it doesn't say that they yeah. will be accepted after. So we might have a little bit of leeway. Yeah, I'll leave it to staff to have a quick look at that. If uh, capacity or time or other uh, issues come in the way, then we'll just leave it alone for now. Um, but yeah, if there's an opportunity, sure, have a look. I, I just, the continuing um, situation in the world right now, I just, I, I, I have concerns about that. Anyways. Um, so can I just then to go back, because you're right, we yeah. could just be specific and just do a digital signage which does fulfill those things and it does tie in. So again, not to do too much and that would, or, or I, cause I don't want to burden anybody with it. Um, I just know that when we have looked at those, when Roger looked at it, it was like $90,000. Yeah. Um, but imagine if we did need to evacuate or anything and we had it right in the center, I just, I yeah, wonder. But, it, but we're not going to get it for this, this season anyways, but I, I will leave it with staff to, okay. to have the, to look at it. Um, quickly, and if it's not within capacity, I'm quite yeah, sure there's going to be another opportunity after this one. Um, UBCM request for uh, with Mr. Um, Cabinet Minister Surrey and Premier Horgan. City of North Vancouver. Oh, sorry, I want to go back to uh, Horgan and my yeah. question with him. And what I am a little bit nervous about is so I read CFJC and the reports from Kamloops and they had their June per fire and, and where that's led to some ministerial meetings and egress and, and all of that. What I get concerned about is that sometimes those with the loudest voices are heard and are actioned. When the mayor has rightly pointed out for years and years and years, we have our own egress. Where my point of asking for a meeting is um, asking for some sort of equity in an evaluation of when we put out resources. So the new, and we've got it on our, our agenda, the Voyant, Voivent, how do you pronounce it? Is that the city of Kamloops is asking for some assistance with subsidizing that cost. If there's other money that's going out there, how are we, how are we allocating um, eligibility based on need. So 
there's a lot of talk about can loops, but look at our backyard, look at what just happened up at Candle Creek. So where's the equity in making these decisions as opposed to the lobbying? Yeah, I think that's uh, Councillor Herring, go ahead. Yeah, I think it's No, but it is just to bring it up. I'm just seeing more and more where, and we, we see decisions like this made all the time where pockets of money are given for political lobbying as opposed to need. And we need, you know, some, some accountability. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of an ethical dilemma um, because of how it's managed. I mean, Campbell's is going forward asking for money uh, based on immediate need, not through a grant program, not through an open funding program, just, and, and that's happened with the city of Vancouver and others. Um, and quite often they're they're uh, viewed by the province, but yes, um, it is how large, how how tall is the soapbox you can stand on um, as far as getting attention on that? Though we do fairly good here. Um, yes, um, I will I will look into that through channels and to discuss it with a couple other mayors. Maybe we can do it as a coalition of mayors, especially through that the is a here. really good idea. I have a feeling that there's after uh, after unfortunately like. Um, the TNRD mayors that are facing similar issues that relate to the conversation in Kamloops are going to ask for the same sort of asset access that Kamloops has had on this one. Right? Um, yeah, um, especially, and, and a lot of people, a lot of citizen concern in the last week, and I'm sure you've heard it too, is that we still have our major tourist draw with one way in, one way out. Um, and as a community that would be an evacuation point for that. Um, that is a huge concern for us, uh, as well as the safety of area residents that don't live with clear water. And okay. I don't want to mitigate um, Kamloops asks or anything. I just want a fair scale that we all get to play in the sandbox. Sure. Good luck, but yes, I hear you. <laughs> um, so no, we're not going to take any direct action on that, but I will, I will, use my chain of resources to ask those questions. Uh, City of North Vancouver, UBCM resolution on pass, safe passing distance for all road users. I think it would be a great discussion uh, for UBCM and other places for a grant funding program to look after this. It's something that could be used in a, in a place like Clearwater, I, I absolutely agree. Um, but if it could require uh, provincial funding, I mean, as a town with how many 70 plus minus kilometers of road, what a great way to help roadside fixes and things like that. Councillor Fizzle. I just wanted to add to that. We need it more now because we see more and more people out on the e-bike exploding. And we've got high hazard bikes that are every day in groups of nine to 12. Yeah, for sure. E-bikes and camels have absolutely exploded. It's the first time that um, transportation up and down the, the south shore up to Aberdeen and Sahali, it's completely changed how it works. Um, and there's already issues. Uh, UBCM, read director, directorate large vacancy on MIABC board of directors. Anybody want to run for that? Go right ahead. Uh, and item K, our Ministry of Municipal Affairs, ReBC's four step restart program. Just leave it there. No notice of motion. Other business, community wide notification software. We've all heard lots about Voyant. Um, TNRD has it. Lots of people in Clearwater already signed up through the TNRD program. Um, I'll leave it to staff to comment if you wish. You looked into this a bit. Uh, yes, uh, if I may. Um, the TNRD program does not work in the District of Clearwater, it's only in TNRD controlled jurisdictions. Yeah. And so, um, you may get an alert when TNRD issues one for those areas, but not for our community. And so it's up to council to decide if this is in our best interest to proceed. Lots of council. Um, this was actually, I found, I found the original presentation to us. It was presented last year. Um, Councillor Herring. I 
would agree with that. Um, the, the fact that it's not just cell phone based, it is uh, landline based. They will call you on your landline. They will send you an email. You can make the choices of which channels you sign up for. When you're doing your thing, Councillor Bamford, I see your hand up there. Yeah, no, it's, it's um, it'll, like you said, it'll go landline, it'll go email, it'll go text message, whatever. I did sign up on it and it seemed to work for uh, initially it worked for the test sequence that they did for both email and telephone because immediately after signing up the phone rang and it was a test for the alert thing now whether it would continue working or not but there certainly is a lot of options on the different methods that it would contact you yeah i agree with you on that um see, see i i've signed up and and it works 14 rd recommendations so no council fizzle um, this would um, help a lot of the concerns that I got to email from the house was how are we going to improve that? What about those of us that we have all by ourselves? These things like how do we improve that? It's, it's just one, of the, one more thing to alleviate and to stress. Councillor? The, yeah, so yeah, the uh, the warning would come through this app for sure, but always with an evacuation in force, you'd have search and rescue in the RCMP going site to site. So, you know, as long as people know that this is a great way to know ahead of time, but no one's going to get left behind. Oh. At least that's the intention. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put this question to you from your past experience. Do you think this would be useful in an alert stage to get the word out? Absolutely. To be honest, I, I find them useful in every stage because even in terms of recovery, once you want to reach this group of people about, you know, they might be distributing to Kamloops, to Prince George, to go visit family on the coast, right? So just having the ability to contact everyone without having to kind of, you know, track everybody down afterwards is also really useful. Yeah, and, and it seems from the TNRD that it has an incredibly high level of uptake. Uh, Councillor Taylor, do you have this? There you, there you go. So as a, as a uh, cross-jurisdictional human being over there. Good. Have you, have you re actually received any alerts or anything so far? <laughs> That's a good thing. That's a good thing. I'm, I'm glad that you have it. Anyways, there is a recommendation. I'll move the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Sim. Seconded by seconded. Councillor McKenzie. This is great. All those in favor, let's do this. I think some of the reticence before is that we hadn't seen it operating anywhere. And now that we have, um, when this originally kept, I believe it was February 2020. Um, now that we have, now we've seen what it can do for the TNRD, it's, it's, it's an excellent thing. Hey, guess what, public? It's time for your comments. Long time no see. Um, I'm gonna suggest that if you can either yell or I'll repeat your questions, but if you if you wish, you can come up to the mic so that the people online can hear, including Council Bamford, who uh, needs to stay at home for personal reasons and um, well, just because he's very, he's probably knitting or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so anyways, Annabelle. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's a. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, it's it's amazing how intertwined everything is. And yeah, it's a rough time for everybody. Thank you for your comments, Annabella. Welcome back. Yes, Sandra. Thank you. 
A Annabelle, a very, if you didn't catch that, Annabelle says uh, she's happy to be back and, and made comments about her life and, and connections to Lynn and donating to the Red Cross. Go ahead. Uh, Sandra Holmes, senior citizen, community volunteer. I would just, first of all, really like to say welcome to the tournament. We're delighted, delighted to have you here. Um, the other thing I want to say is that it is wonderful to be at a meeting. Mm, this is an awful thing for me to say because I don't like meetings very much. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I want to say personally, I want to thank the council and um, for continuing to support us. But I just want to say thank you very much for your continued financial support. It means a huge amount for seniors to have a connection. Um, that's one of the most important things with seniors is trying to stay connected, not only with um, you know, what's going on in the world, but you know, with the challenges that are going on in the world. Um, I also would like to say that um, <laughs> it's really kind of cool to uh, know that the mayor is going to be giving lunch with some of the things on there. With the movie camera and tomorrow, the yep. seniors are going to be having lunch with a fabulous, fabulous caterer here. And there's over like 50 people who can come in. And I just thought, wouldn't that be something else just to sort of like do it here? Right? Uh. I'm just, I'm just saying. So, 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 I, I was invited to that, and I'm having a blank out that I was invited to that. Uh, which park and what North time? Thompson Park. At what time? Uh, at twelve. Okay. When does everything go twelve? Okay. Excellent. Well, I just, I just think that's a big. I mean. The seniors in this community are just so amazing that that would be such a little bit of a. So I, I will see. I will see what I can do. I have a feeling that my um, immediate review is somewhat flexible because I've never met a traveling reporter that made it anywhere on time. Um, so usually, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Um, I, I, you know, I am all in favor of first and second lunch. So, <laughs> so <laughs> yes. I did want to say thank you very much. It's helpful. I'm keeping you on because. Thank you. Yeah. And, and our staff makes us look really good. So we'll just go with that. Any further comments or questions from the public? Uh, Ms. Craw Ms. Crawick, you, I'll, I'll allow you to stay seated. Thank you. Yeah, it, it varies between first and second. Um, I think two doses is 69% of those eligible. So that's above 12 is sort of where the number's at. Um, first doses is higher than that of that age group. It's somewhere in the 70s of those eligible, 78 or 79 if I remember correctly. And it's changing on, uh, some people are still getting vaccinated out of town. So it, it does change and it's those, those numbers aren't completely accurate. We are not quite to the 80% herd immunity that they're hoping for. We have one more clinic coming. I believe it's January or July, 20th. July 28th. Yeah. So, so that's the next community clinic. And then it may trickle down to the pharmacists having it available or other things like that. Um, but interior health has identified communities that they would like to do further work on with, um, one day rolling clinics. And I have a feeling that these pop-up clinics may be in a, in a RV or something um, versus the having to set up the tent all the time are going to start traveling around rural communities on a bit more regular basis because 
Um, they, they do want to catch the stragglers. I think the other thing on the, the vaccination, and thank you for bringing it up, is now that a lot of us have been received first and second dose vaccine, vaccines now, and there, there have been some reactions. Some people have had you know, bad or uncomfortable experiences with them, but the ma vast majority of people have made it through fine in, in clear water. Um, so I think there's a lot of more confidence from those that were not thinking that they needed to get a vaccine or were uncomfortable getting a vaccine um, to try it. So, you know, the longer we can stretch out the vaccination process with material, the better. For the next question. What? My, my hot air is hard to bring it, breathe in at the best of times, but recycling it is not friendly. I agree with you 100% on that. So Barry Goldie's asking, how would we deal with a person that we know is not vaccinated um, in our own personal sort of risk assessment? And um, if anybody from council wants to do that, but my basic, I don't just look at the people who are not vaccinated. I look at the situation in the community. I make a risk assessment on how I'm gonna interact with people. We, we could be passing people every day at Milo that are completely not vaccinated and not from this area. There's a certain level of risk of just going around, but inviting people into your home. Um, for me, um, I am not a terribly high risk for illness person. So having two vaccinated uh, vaccinations, if I know the person well, I, I talk to them about their travel history, I would be probably okay having them in my backyard right now and maybe into my house if they were close family. My mother, on the other hand, who is higher risk, she is not comfortable with that situation. So I think you have to make it your own call. And I think you need to stand by it. You have to say, if you're not comfortable, my, 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 one of my own relatives won't get vaccinated for personal beliefs. Um, my mother will not let him in the house. And I agree with her on that stance. Yeah, and Councillor Bamford, I believe, has a comment on that. I tend to agree with you, I think, Mayor Bacco, but I guess on the other hand, some of it is almost a reverse risk. If you're vaccinated and someone isn't, the impact that COVID would have on you is much less severe than it would have on somebody else. So to me, the greater risk is a, to them, sort of a thing of coming in, right? Whether or not you're going to allow it. But it's an individual call. There's absolutely no question, because I know people who aren't vaccinated kind of a thing right so you just have to do what your conscience tells you as you need to do yes and that's a good reminder that you can still get COVID if you're vaccinated and you can still spread COVID if you're vaccinated it's just your your risk of harsher reactions or our consequences are, are generally lowered by vaccines but vaccines aren't perfect um any further comments or questions Bonnie do you have anything back there thank you for coming uh, we need to move into in camera. We're going to take a five minute recess, but there's a motion right now. Uh, a recommendation that the meeting be closed to the public pursuance to sections 91 C and I of the community charter to discuss uh, matters relating to labor relations or other employee, employee relations and the receipt of advice subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose. Can I get somebody to move and second that? Moved by Councillor Frizzle, Second. seconded by Councillor McKenzie. Let's take a five minute break because I believe- well, I, I need, Will I need a new link? That's what I was gonna go. Yes, uh, uh, Mr. Penny is signaling that you'll have a new link in your email. Uh, so we'll give it a little bit of time here. It's uh, 3.53, we'll try to be back for four o'clock. Okay, thank you. Thank you everybody.